guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build two drop downs in Excel with one drop down dependent on the other. Meaning, um, take an example here. I, ha I would I would build the first drop down where I can input the car brands, <coughs> and in the in the second drop down, I will be inputting the uh, a model of that specific brand that I chose. And the, and, the, and the models appearing in this dropdown would be dependent on the brand I chose. Now, how would you go about that? Well, first of all, I, I would build a car brand dropdown. And my data is over here in the table list data. I got the brands lined up in the first row. And under each brand are its diverse models. Yeah, and I can easily add more models down here and obviously add more brands uh, in each in, in those cells up here. Right, so let's get started. Car brand, I go to data, data validation, data validation, pick list, click in source, and go over here. Now, in the in a previous video, I said that when you're dealing with drop downs, it's always advisable to select the whole column. Well, uh, in this case, because all our brands are in the first row, I just select the first row. And okay. And here we are. And obviously, because we selected the first row, I can now easily add some more brands. And just let me put in the few models for that one. And you would see that this new brand is automatically in my dropdown without me having to do anything to that dropdown. Right, so that's settled. Now we come to the second dropdown, which is the car type or model. And here, I'm just gonna build a build a, a, a second drop down the same as I did previously list go to source and pick the opal uh, models okay and got it so and there we go we got the opal models works perfectly until I changed my brand and then this one here is no more no, not adequate anymore because it still shows the opal models and not the BMW models so here's how we can do that but the reason why i created this drop down is for the formula and this i'm going to copy that i'm going to insert it right here okay. and let me format that in uh, red and increase the size of it so we can all see that so there you go that's the formula in this drop down and as you see this formula is pretty static it is always pointing to the range d2 to d4 in the table list data nothing changes here and we, we uh, the, the objective of this exercise is to turn this static formula or list range into a dynamic one and uh, there are two things we have to um, find out or, 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 or determine or calculate first of all the D D is, 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 is the opal column so obviously I need a sort of a variable column I, I always gotta have I always gotta know in which column is my brand so BMW is in column B Ford is in C so I need the way to, to turn that D that static D into some dynamic uh, 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 thing so it changes with the with the chosen brand so when I choose uh, BMW it should be B and so on and the second thing that I need to change is that four that four denotes how far my range goes the opals they go to row four uh, whereas the BMWs they would go to row six and the Odys to row eight so also this four has to be turned dynamic in some way well, let's start with the with the column. I would I would like to find out in which column is my brand. So there we go, brand column. And uh, there's a function for that. It's called match. What match does? Match takes the term you're looking for, and and looks in a certain array. Where is that term? And gives you either the row or column number of that item or where that item is found let's try it out I go into insert function I got most recently used there is match now I can also get match under all and roll down to M uh, where is it up here match 
or if you can remember it's under lookup and reference and you would find match here right now match is sort of like a like a phone book if you're looking for a name I know this guy is called Smith and I need his phone number so I, what's my looking look up value in this term I'm looking if I open a phone book what do I look for I look for Smith same thing here what's my lookup value it's my brand so there's there's my brand this cell now where's my array where's the phone book in other words well my array is this whole row because all my brands current and future brands are all going to be in this first row so I just click the whole row and then match type well in um, in that function match you got like three options zero minus one or one zero means exact match okay and that's what we're looking for we're looking for an exact match so I just type in zero and there you go it gives me two so BMW is two and OD is one and Ford is three and Opel is four so already I got I got my I got my column okay now let's get the second thing that that four how do I get that well uh, row count how do I get that four well there's a function called actually there are two functions one is called count and one is called count a count only counts cells which have numbers in them whereas count a counts all cells regardless of content well obviously because most of our content is text uh, we're gonna be using count a and count a now I don't know in which category count a is I forgot so I go under all and just scroll down to C uh, count a there you go so and now I, I want to count the, the opals so I just click this whole row here and bingo so I got like four which is true opals just go to row four and here I'm gonna copy that from because I'm gonna show you my problem let me put it down here and let me paste that and let me carry that format over here right so that's my count formula and uh, and you see the problem with my formula is here as here it is pretty static it just rotates around D it doesn't you know okay for opal or opals they're in column D no problem with that but what if I what about BMW BMWs as we know go down to row 6 so that 4 is not true or not correct so how do I go about that well let me first explain a small thing in Excel you have two types of references you have this type of reference let's say like B2 E19 G uh, I don't know 37 so B2 would be like this cell here E19 would be like here and G37 would be way down there right there's another type of cell reference which is the RC type which means row Two, column two right so that's b2 b2 translates to row two and column two that's the RC format e19 R stands for rows and 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 then C for column so the e19 would translate to row 19 and column well E's column one two three four five five okay so same here uh, with the G37 that's row 37 and column well G is one two three four five six seven seven right now either either one you could use in Excel now obviously this is much more um, intuitive and easier to understand but these are now in our case much more preferable and I tell you why because my columns are coming out as numbers and not as alphabets now I could obviously I could one way of, 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 of converting those numbers to, to alphabets I could I could do me a sort of a mini table like one two three and uh, and here have B you know and sort of a uh, use a, a second function called VLOOKUP where if I got one that means a and so on but you know what I'm gonna spare me that hassle and uh, I'm gonna stick to those numbers and by sticking to those numbers I'm gonna use these formats or these cell references instead of these meaning so if I convert that formula 
to those cell references that means D is is basically C4 and that D as well C4 okay I'm just gonna make it blue so we can distinguish right same thing here if I change that forget about the dollar signs they're not they're not important this exercise the D2 would be row 2 column 4 okay the D5 oh, sorry D4 it should be the D4 should be row 4 column 4 okay so I just converted those red formulas into those blue ones why because because my columns are coming out as numbers so this format is is easier for me to emulate these blue ones rather than the red ones so and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm, I'm, first one I'm gonna emulate or, or, or copy is this one I'm gonna turn this this is still pretty static because it still points to column 4 I'm gonna change that into dynamic and the way to create now what I want to do I want to create this bit within the parentheses this this is a cell range this is this is now a static cell range going to to table list data and 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 then just selecting the whole column four i don't want to change that instead of this four it should be uh, referring to the content of that cell and the way to to create your own dynamic uh, 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 cell reference or or cell range is with a function called indirect and indirect either under all as usual or it's under lookup and reference and there it is and with indirect now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna emulate that bit within the parentheses so I'm gonna start and text comes in quotation marks so quotation open list underscore data exclamation mark the C well that's pretty static that's not gonna change that denotes column now then close quotation now I want to add that cell reference I'm not gonna write in four because then I, then I haven't done anything I, I want this cell reference now so the text is ended to connect that cell reference to that text I add an ampersand and then that cell reference the h3 right and you see I already got the first bit until the colon now I need to add the colon and that second C so again ampersand open quotation colon C close quotation because that's the end of that uh, piece of text and then another ampersand and then I need to get that second column which is basically our brand column okay and if you see I got now the same format as this one okay my numbers are different but it doesn't matter once I pick opal I'll know I'm gonna get fours anyways all right so in the second field here you can either insert true or false if you are using if you're using these cell formats you type in false whereas if you are using this type of uh, or this yeah this this type of cells or cell ad, um, uh, um, addresses then or references you you use you put in true but we're using these these guys over here the RC format so we put in false and okay now that is still only that bit here now we gotta add Th that that count a text and open param and at the back close parentheses all right so I'm just gonna click in here count a open param and here at the back close param so now you see let me make that blue bold now you see that's my row count and it is variable because once I go to opal I got four just like this one but now once I go to BMW I get six and once I go to OD I get eight is that true yep OD is eight eight rows BMW is six and Opal is four okay so basically I don't need that thing anymore I can delete that and just push that thing up here right so now we already handled one thing we, we have this this number is now dynamic with this one here so now comes the last step basically which is I'm going to emulate this one in blue and instead of that four here I'm going to uh, sorry instead of that four here that's the one instead of that four here I'm going to use this and that four here I'm going to use the row color, the the brand color okay and again the way to emulate this data range is with indirect so I go again 
Well, lookup and reference, indirect or, because we already used it, should be under most recently used, there it is. And here we go, again, open quotation, list underscore data, exclamation. Now, R2, I can write in R2 because the two ain't gonna change. Why? I'll tell you why. Because all my models start at row two, without exception, even future models, they're going to start at row two. So basically, I can, that part till the, the R2 can be written in, you know, hard coded as text because it's not going to change, right? Let me repeat that now, indirect. So open quotation, list underscore data, exclamation, R2. Now, and the C, because that, that C denotes column, ain't going to change either. Close quotation, ampersand. Now, Where's my column? Where's my column? There it is. There's my column. Okay, then ampersand, open quotation. Now I got my colon and my second R, close quotation. Where's my max R or my, my biggest row count? This is or biggest row here. There it is. Then ampersand, open quotation, the letter C, the final letter C are here, and then another ampersand and my brand column again. And if you see, I got basically the same format. List data R2C1, R8C1, see? And that one here is dynamic, depending on these two, whereas this one is static, will never change. All right. And again here, because we're using those uh, RC cell references, we type in pulse. Right, so now forget about that. Th that's not important here. What, why I wrote the formula here, because I wrote it here just to, for one purpose only, to copy it and, uh, sorry, what did I do now? I just want to copy it and then click in here, go to data, data validation, and then I'm going to replace, I'm going to take that off, that old formula and paste in what I just copied. And there we go. And now, BMW, I got all my BMWs. Uh, Fords, I got all my Fords. Opel, I got all my Opels, okay? The reason I wrote that formula here because in here it's much easier to write that than going over here and writing it in here. That's the only reason. If you prefer writing it here, hey, go ahead, okay? So that's that, and the beauty of this thing is I don't have to touch any more of these formulas. If I add a brand, let's say I add Ferrari, and now I, I don't know any recent Ferrari models, so I'm just gonna type in the ones I know from the past, 308, 4112. See, and that new brand is automatically in, and ditto for the models. And obviously, you can add further models in here, and if I go to BMW, the new models would be in here. So you see that method that I just showed you is a bit complicated because you have to do some calculations. However, it is eternally flexible. Regardless, you can add in an infinite number of brands, an infinite number of models to each brand. You don't have to touch any of your calculations. Your drop downs are always going to be up to date, without exception. Now, the only thing what we can do now is just clean up this whole stuff. Well, I don't need that stuff anymore. Okay, I don't need that stuff anymore. That I don't need. So I just have these two. And these two, I can either, you know, uh, turn these, uh, hide these columns, or, and that's the, the better scenario, if you are building an Excel application, in all probability, you will have multiple uh, drop downs and uh, more, uh, many of these are dependent on others. So it's preferable to put all your calculations for your drop downs in a separate uh, sheet and then hide this sheet from the user, be it yourself or other people using that, that, that sheet or that Excel application. And for each calculation, you, you can type in, like for instance, here are the car brands, okay? Then, uh, sorry, just, uh, so brands. 
and then uh, here that, now that's one calculation and then for another calculation you can put in here something else and you have a different calculation but basically it's preferable to have all those calculations at the back in in some in some hidden sheet and the, your 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 formula would then refer to those cells in that sheet much better than having it in here right so that's about it uh, regarding uh, drop downs and like i said i mean it's a bit complicated but it gives you that flexibility you are able now to update your brands or your models without having to touch your drop down